In dealing with the acoustics of sound, we're going to run into various types of sound. The first type of sound is a simple periodic sound. We'll cover this first in part because it can be seen as a building block for all other types of sounds. Simple periodic sounds are also sometimes called pure tones. These sounds have just one frequency in them, can be graphed out as a sinusoidal shaped wave, smooth and repetitive. The uh, tone in a simple periodic sound can be matched to a specific musical note. We can get sounds like these out of simple harmonic motions, such as from a tuning fork. These sounds have a frequency and an amplitude. Our perceptual counterparts for those are a pitch for frequency and amplitude for loudness. So if we look at waveform graphs of simple periodic sounds like these, the two graphs at the top for a sound of the same frequency, uh, shows a difference in amplitude on the basis of which one has bigger displacement in terms of pressure along the vertical axis. So the upper left sound would be quieter and the upper right sound would be louder. For the two sounds uh, in the bottom waveforms, one has a uh, much longer cycle of repetition and the one in the lower left you don't even see one complete cycle of rep repetition. We have compression, um, get back down to atmospheric pressure and start rarefaction but we don't come back up again. Uh, the sound on the right has two complete cycles that we can see. Um, so that's going to mean it has a shorter period and if it has a shorter period then it has a higher frequency and, and so then we will perceive that as having a higher pitch. We can make a very simple measure of amplitude off of a, a simple periodic wave by looking at the distance from uh, it's called peak to peak amplitude but uh, it's really peak to trough the highest point to the lowest point. Uh, we can do the math with that by taking the maximum value that we find um, and subtracting off the minimum value that we find. The peak to peak amplitude is maximum minus minimum. In the case of this simple tone where the maximum is 1 and the minimum is minus 1, subtracting off a minus 1 uh, results in adding 1 and gives you a total of 2. Sorry, that slide changed. That's my cat walking across my keyboard and moving slides for me. Let me pause a second. And we're back. So the peak-to-peak -peak amplitude is the distance from the lowest point to the minus point. So if we go from minus 1, 1 below, all the way up to plus 1, 1 above, that's a total distance of 2. So our peak-to-peak -peak amplitude here would be 2. Uh, you may have noticed that for this simple wave, you can take the... Um, uh, maximum value and double it and also get two. That'll be true for all simple periodic waves, but it won't be true once we do this with complex waves. There is another measurable dimension to simple periodic waves called phase. When we have a repeating pattern um, in a cycle, uh, we have landmarks that I've mentioned like uh, compression and uh, returning back to atmospheric pressure and rarefaction. Um, if we have two waves with the same frequency, the alignment between those um, peaks of compression and troughs of rarefaction uh, defines a relative position uh, which we refer to as phase. Um, so you may remember from trigonometry back in the day, a uh, full cycle is 360 degrees or 2 pi in radians. Each quarter of a cycle is 90 degrees. So in the upper right I've marked peak compression at 90, back to zero at 180, peak rarefaction at 270, and then back to zero again at 360, which is also our starting point. We're not going to do a lot with phase, but it is an important concept because it's used by listeners to identify the direction that a sound comes from. So here we have a, um, a drawing of a head. You can tell its orientation by the nose and ears, and a sound source off to the uh, front right. 
when you have uh, two different ears hearing the same sound, one ear may be closer to the sound than the other. Uh, and so as those uh, sounds uh, are perceived by your two ears, uh, there is a uh, phase difference between them because of that time difference. There are also some other localization cues like an amplitude difference. The sound will be louder on the side um, that it's coming from than it will be on the other side. It's also the case that if, you're, if your head somewhat gets in the way of um, the sound coming from one side, that will affect how it affects the ear on the other side. Um, your ears have a little bit of a uh, shape to them too that influences how uh, sound goes into them uh, based on direction. Okay, so here's a basic simple periodic waveform. We can divide this waveform up into cycles. Um, for example, if I start at zero, I get back to that same zero point here, and then here, and then here, and then finally at the end again. My period is the duration of one cycle, so that's that right there, and looks like it's 0.05. So my frequency then is going to be 1 divided by that point o, oops, point 0.005. Make sure I get the right number of zeros in there. And that's going to get me what? Well, let's see. Uh, 1 divided by point zero zero 0.005 is... 200 hertz. Okay, um, we know the frequency, 200 hertz. We can use that to compute the wavelength. The wavelength is speed of sound, which is 34400 divided by the frequency, which is 200. So that gives us 172. And in this case, uh, centimeters, because our speed of sound was in centimeters. Our peak-to-peak -peak amplitude, well, the highest point up here, uh, guesstimate that's maybe around 0.6 lowest point down here, I'll go with minus 0.6, so uh, that is symmetric in a simple periodic sound. So if I take 0.6, subtract off a minus 0.6, or if I think about the distance from 0.6 under to 0.6 over, that's 1.2. And this one, with our waves in prot, without calibrated equipment, doesn't really have any units. Um, so we don't know how loud 1.2 is, about all we could do is compare relative loudness um, of things in different parts of a recording. So um, maybe to highlight that lack of units difference, I should be sure to mark my frequency hertz up here. Okay, and then last but not least, um, a phase difference. We have a, a different sound that starts out at its compression peak. For our original sound, uh, we start out at a zero point, head down to rarefaction, that's 90 degrees, back up to zero, um, to atmospheric pressure, and then finally up to the same point as on the sound down below. Uh, so 90, 180, 270, so the phase difference is 270 degrees. Uh, not sure I unpen. Hopefully that does it. Okay, here we have another practice problem. Um, uh, that I would uh, normally go through in a class. Um, period, again, is the um, duration of one cycle. So we start up here at a peak, 
my next peak is here. That's one cycle. My next peak is here. That's two cycles, three cycles, four cycles, five cycles, six cycles. I have seven cycles that get me out to a total time of 0 0.02. Um, so that's what I'm going to go with. Seven cycles um, takes 0 0.02 time. So each one cycle is going to be 0 0.02 divided by seven. Uh, Point oh two divided by seven is double O two eight six, let's say. Okay. So uh where do I write that? Point zero zero two eight six. All right, the frequency then would be one over that double O two eight six. Or frequency is number of cycles over number of seconds, so that's uh, upside down from what I just did. Seven cycles took me a total of 0.02 seconds. So I think I'll use that. Seven divided by 0 0.02 is 350. Okay, if my frequency is 350, my wavelength is 34, 400, divided by that frequency, 350, 34, 400, divided by 350, 98.3, 98. Point three. Yeah, my writing's getting bad. Centimeters. And last but not least, peak-to-peak -peak amplitude. Got extra marks on here. That's definitely from minus 0 0.6 up to plus 0 0.6, so it looks like I'm being repetitive and I have another 1.2 here. Okay, going through all of that work, to figure out the frequency of a simple periodic sound um, very clearly relates period and frequency for us but when we are analyzing sounds um, it's kind of silly to have us humans do that repetitive math all the time um, so we can get a computer to do that for us um, and we can uh, use a computer to display a sound differently from the waveform in a graph that shows us that frequency directly called a spectrum. In a spectrum, the x-axis across the bottom is frequency, the y-axis up the side is amplitude. Here we have a, a waveform on the top of a simple periodic sound. That simple periodic sound has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 cycles over 1 second. So if we have 10 cycles per second, that is a frequency of 10 hertz. The graph on the bottom um, shows us frequency along the x-axis and uh, amplitude up the y-axis. It has one blue stick in it um, at 10. So that is a representation of this simple periodic sound, showing that it repeats at a frequency of 10 hertz with a particular amplitude. So these two graphs are graphs of the same sound. They are just displaying that sound in slightly different ways. So the waveform is very useful when looking at a sound over time. It shows us amplitude at each point in time. This is good for measuring things like duration, how long something lasts, or seeing the exact moment that something happens in a sound. The spectrum is a frequency domain representation showing the average amplitude over an interval of time. 
So this is good for looking at frequency components, but in order to measure a frequency, you have to watch a sound for a while. You have to watch its pattern of repetition. So you need that sound uh, to be something that you can watch for a while and have it not change very much, because if it changes, then its frequency is going to change. In a simple periodic sound, these two things are uh, interchangeable. Um, but when we get to dealing with real sounds uh, in speech, for example, the two different representations um, will be useful ways to look at different properties of the sounds. Speaking of getting to real sounds, um, when we look at sounds out there in the real world, uh, none of them are actually periodic according to the mathematical definition. Uh, the, the mathematical definition of repeating perfectly forever is something that's not going to happen in the real world. But there are many sounds that repeat regularly enough um, that they are close enough to periodic that we can measure them that way for some period of sound. We refer to these sounds as quasi-periodic sounds, and if we're not being particularly careful, a lot of times we'll talk about sounds being periodic when in reality they're quasi-periodic. We can use all these same concepts of frequency, peak-to-peak -peak amplitude, and phase in uh, quasi-periodic versions of simple periodic sounds. So for example, here is a waveform of a quasi-periodic sound you can see that we don't have uh, the same peak amplitudes going across the top of the sound here. It wanders up and down a little bit. Same thing for the bottom of the trough. It wanders up and down a little bit, so it's not exactly the same. The wave is a little bit fuzzy, um, but there is a certain amount of regularity to it. If we uh, start to look at periods, um, we have one, two, three, four, uh, a little past 0 0.01, five, six, seven, looks like eight gets us pretty close to 0 0.021. So we could figure out a frequency for this sound um, by uh, having eight cycles in 0 0.021 seconds. Eight divided by 0 0.021. That gives us a frequency around 381 hertz for this quasi-periodic sound. Uh, peak to peak amplitude looks like the lower end is roughly around 0 0.6. Um, the higher end um, may be also roughly around 0 0.6. Uh, so uh, I'm being extremely repetitive with another uh, sound with a peak-to-peak -peak amplitude of something around 1.2.